Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this session, let's learn about adrenal gland pathology. Uh, this is a series on adrenal gland pathology and this is the part one of uh, the series on adrenal gland pathology where we will look into briefly about the anatomy and histology of adrenal gland. And then we will see the various functions of adrenal gland and then finally uh, try to classify the diseases of adrenal glands. So, what are these adrenal glands? These are suprarenal glands. Why are they called suprarenal? Because they are situated on the top of each of the kidney, right? So, they are suprarenal glands. They are paired endocrine glands which consists of cortex and a medulla. So, if you uh, slice the adrenal gland, you can easily make out that there is two distinct portions. One is the cortex, the second one is the medulla. Okay. So, this cortex is actually derived from mesoderm, whereas medulla is derived from neural crest. So, essentially, the adrenal gland is actually a package of two glands in one structure. Okay. Because these two perform uh, different functions. Right. So, if you look at the histology of adrenal gland, this is how, if you just take a slice of this particular part, this is what we look into. You can easily make out that the cortex forms the junk of the adrenal gland and then the small portion is your adrenal medulla. So, let's look into the histology. As I told you, the adrenal gland has cortex and medulla. You have a very thick capsule and the cortex is divided into three distinct zones. One is called zona glomerulosa. The first one is called zona glomerulosa because the cells are arranged in the form of uh, glomeruli. They are basically clusters of cells. Okay, that's why it's zona glomerulosa. Next one is zona fasciculata, which forms the major chunk of the cortex and they contain cords of these polygonal cells. They are lightly stained because they contain abundant lipid and the, these are you know, separated by a delicate vascular network. Can you see those blood vessels? So, that's zona fasciculata. It's lighter stain, constitutes more than 70 to 80% of the adrenal cortex. The third important layer of cortex is the zona reticularis. And this is also a darkly stained, slightly polyhedral cell cells. Now, they can be seen in the form of cords or small clusters. So, this is zona reticularis and then finally, you have adrenal medulla. The innermost part of the adrenal gland is the adrenal medulla where you see two different kinds of cells. The one, this, these are called as chromaffin cells. This is the predominant cells of adrenal medulla and you also have these neuronal cells scattered here and there, right? So, the chromaffin cells, they are large polygonal cells and they have abundant eosinophilic to granular cytoplasm. So, that's about the histology of adrenal gland. So, you know that there is a cortex and then there is a medulla. Cortex is comprised of zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata and zona reticularis. Remember, G, F, R, okay, glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis. Now, let us see the functions of adrenal gland. The first one, the cells of the zona glomerulosa secrete mineralocorticoids. The most important uh, you know, hormone secreted is the aldosterone. So, the main function of this aldosterone is regulation of blood pressure and water balance. So, remember salts for aldosterone. The second important one is from the zona fasciculata. They secrete glucocorticoids. The most important ones are cortisol and cortisone. They are the ones which stimulates protein, fat and carbohydrate metabolism, predominantly carbohydrate metabolism and that's why just remember sugars for glucocorticoids. The third one is the zona reticularis, the cells of zona reticularis which secretes sex steroids, weak androgens, you know, which can be converted to testosterone and estrogen. And these are the ones which are responsible for the development of secondary sexual characteristics in both the sexes. So, salt, sugars and sex. Remember, these three components of functions of adrenal gland. Then when you move on to the medulla, medulla contains chromaffin cells. 
you know they secrete epinephrine and nor epinephrine right so they are other, otherwise uh, also called as adrenaline or adrenaline and nor adrenaline and these are the ones which are released in response to stress so remember salt sugar sex and stress for the functions of adrenal gland moving on to understanding the pathology of adrenal gland let's look into the pathology of adrenal gland cortex so we can study the pathology in three headings one hyperfunction of adrenal cortex two hypofunction of adrenal cortex and three adrenocortical neoplasms so what do you mean by hyperfunction which is also referred to as let us look into the first layer hyperfunction of mineralocorticoids is referred to as hyperaldosteronism right so hyperaldosteronism can be primary hyperaldosteronism or secondary hyperaldosteronism the primary hyperaldosteronism can be idiopathic can be due to neoplasms or can be due to familial causes so remember i am just giving you a brief overview of all the diseases of adrenal gland in this session let us learn i mean we will learn in detail about each of these in subsequent sessions as of now remember we have hyperaldosteronism primary and secondary and primary can be due to idiopathic neoplasm or familial the neoplasm you know hyperaldosteronism resulting from the neoplasm is referred to as con syndrome right though that's about hyperfunction of mineralocorticoids next you have hyperfunction of glucocorticoids it's called as hypercortisolism which is referred to as cushing syndrome the third one is hyperfunctioning of the cells of zona reticularis which means there is lots and lots of secretion of sex steroid which are referred to as androgenital syndromes or virilization syndromes okay and these are because of congenital adrenal hyperplasia or because of tumors right so so this is hyperaldosteronism hypercortisolism or androgenital syndromes constitute the hyperfunctioning of the adrenal cortex now let's move on to understand the hypofunctioning of the adrenal cortex the most important one is adrenocortical insufficiency which can further be classified into primary and secondary and secondary is most often due to pituitary causes whereas primary can be further classified into acute adrenocortical insufficiency and chronic adrenocortical insufficiency so the acute one is referred to as waterhouse friedrichian syndrome whereas the chronic one is referred to as addison disease so I, as i told you we will be studying in detail about these two conditions as well in subsequent sessions so the cause for addison's disease can be various including autoimmune infection metastatic deposits to the adrenal glands and various genetic causes so lastly move, lastly moving on to the tumors of adrenal cortex it can be either be adrenocortical adenoma or adrenocortical carcinoma so that's about the pathology of adrenal cortex now moving on to the pathology of adrenal medulla there are no such hyperfunctioning uh, features there are no disorders which can tell you hyperfunctioning but then straight away the neoplasms are more common in adrenal medulla and we know that there are two types of cells right one is the chromaffin cells what i told you another is a neuronal cells so the tumors arising from the chromaffin cells are called as pheochromocytomas and the ones arising from the neuronal cells are neuroblastic tumors okay so the whole thing if you remember this particular slide i'm sure you will know know all the pathology related to adrenal glands both adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla remember salt sugar sex and stress with respect to the functions of the adrenal gland and then in when you want to understand the concept of hyperfunction hypofunction neoplasms so these are the various categories so that's all about uh, you know the introduction session on adrenal gland pathology in the subsequent sessions in the next session i'll be dealing in detail about hyperfunctioning of the adrenal cortex then we will move on to understand the concepts of adrenal gland tumors right if you have liked the video hit the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask if you feel this channel is useful to you please do subscribe and then don't forget to share if you find this video useful thank you